Now from the latest from your local election headquarters, I'm Emily Clark and I'm Rick Aaron. Social media experts are warning people of the dangers of spreading false political information online. Outlets like Twitter, Facebook and YouTube are at a crossroads of what to do to diminish this misinformation. ABC 4's Jordan Burroughs looked into what's going on with these social media platforms. Over the years, there has been huge concern over social media, and in this presidential election in 2020, that concern is spreading misinformation. Questions including who's spreading it and what's in that misinformation. Utahns I spoke with say you have to pick your own battles on social media, and an associate professor of digital media at the University of Utah says it starts with you. Social media has been around for five presidential elections and every presidential election, it seems the platforms are faced with more and more problems. The proliferation of misinformation. Misinformation that could sway the way people vote in the upcoming 2020 presidential election. That could be really scary, especially when we're faced with making a really important decision. Um, like what, what we're faced with next week. A September Axios survey of 1,000 registered voters found to help diminish the spread of misinformation on social media, it should be shut down. 52% of respondents agreed with that. 79% say social media companies should do more to protect democracy. And 82% support placing warning labels on accounts spreading false information about voting. But what do Utahns think? Shutting it down wouldn't be bad, but it's not necessary. You just have to use your own brain. I think that's extreme. I think that would be almost impossible to make happen. I do think there need to be more regulations and um, that there should be standards that are kept. Some standards are in place for Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Twitter says no political ads are allowed after November 22nd. Facebook says it's no longer accepting any new ads leading up to the election. People over the age of 65 are more susceptible to misinformation. I think that we have to pray and make our decision of what and who we should vote on, not listen to everybody else's opinion. But for Peggy Miller, she says she often does her own independent research like Sarah Brown. The only way to actually find the truth is to educate yourself on both sides so that you can kind of see the middle. The associate professor of digital media you just heard from Avery Holton says social media has seen a big shift, especially from 2016 to 2020. He says what's most important is for voters on social media is to be aware and to be able to put things into context. Reporting in the newsroom, Jordan Burroughs, ABC4 News.